This snake is really unhappy with us. In the Southeast United States, the copperhead is responsible for more venomous snake bites than any other species. In this video, we're doing an experiment to find out what happens if a copperhead bites you. The copperhead is a nocturnal ambush hunter, but being a reptile, it needs to energize before it can begin its nighttime hunt. The best place for it to do that is on warm pavement in the waning hours of day, the road. As a scientist, I can take advantage of this behavior to find our test subject. So I'm hitting the road, cruising for snakes. So the idea here is, we're basically just driving the roads and watching to see if anything comes out onto the roads. A lot of these low traffic country roads are perfect for finding snakes. In this short loop around my house, my best shot at finding one of these venomous reptiles. I saw something over here. Is it, where 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 is it? Is that it there? Is that it there? Yes, copperhead, copperhead. There he is. Oh man, the lighting is grainy. That is a decent sized oh, adult that's what I didn't see him. Eastern Copperhead. What I'm about to do, please don't try and replicate this at home. It's a cool idea, but it's not the best idea. But I think it will show you exactly why you don't want to mess with Copperheads. Basically what we need from this snake is a decent venom sample. He's aware. Oh yeah, look at you. Uh-uh, nope, -uh. no, come here, no, hello. He is warmed up. Oh wow, he's fat. This snake is not very happy with us. I would not go as far as to say this is a misbehaved or an ill-behaved snake. It is the most active copperhead I have ever seen, but I don't blame the snake for this behavior. He is basically trying to get back into the brush, back to safety, to cover away from these two very large heat sources that he has identified as danger. This copperhead feels very threatened and is doing everything in his power to get away from us. This is not a mean snake, this is not an aggressive snake. He hasn't really struck at us, he hasn't really tried to bite or anything. This copperhead just wants to be left alone. All right, so well, I got him here. I'm gonna have to pin him very carefully behind the head with the hook. There we go. This is where it always always gets interesting. I will tell you that every single venomous snake I've worked with, it always hits different than a non-venomous snake. The behavior is roughly the same. All these snakes generally behave very similar. However, if I get bitten by a water snake or a racer or a rat snake, it's gonna hurt, but I'll be fine. Basic first aid, I'm fine. With a copperhead, there is no room for error. This is a venomous snake. It has a potent hemotoxic venom that can basically land me in the hospital. I am not trying to be bitten by this snake. You know, I'm, I'm hoping nothing goes catastrophically wrong here, but this is a high stakes encounter and this is a high stakes maneuver, what I'm doing right here. I've got the snake pinned and I have to be very careful to measure my pressure. Too hard, and I'm gonna hurt the snake. Too soft, and the snake's gonna have enough wiggle room to wrap back around and bite me when I go for his head. Neither of those situations are ideal. We wanna keep the snake safe, and I wanna keep me safe, but we need to get that venom. Okay, I got him. I'm going to get venom out of this copperhead. Now what I'm gonna have to do is insert this little vial in his mouth and just coax him. There we go. Look at that, get him a bite. Oh, look at that. Those fangs are hollow teeth that run right into the snake's venom glands, those fat pockets right in the back of his jaws. What I'm taking advantage of here is that each time he bites down, he oozes a little bit of venom. So I'm trying to get as much venom around the lip of my vial as possible. This copperhead has a very low venom yield and I need to get a big enough sample that I can actually run the reaction under the microscope. Now I got a lot of venom in and around that lip there. It should be enough. The next step, I'm gonna be putting some of this venom in my blood and I'm gonna show you exactly why you wouldn't wanna be bitten by this snake. But first, let's put this little snake back in the wild let it go back about its business. It's had absolutely enough of us. That is insane. I'm gonna release it and then just like that. And he's gonna go right back 
into the brush. Look at that. Copperhead venom is hemotoxic, which means it targets blood. In the wild, this helps it subdue prey by causing them to hemorrhage and die, meaning they won't be fighting back when it's time for the snake to eat. We're about to look at the cellular level of that and see just how dramatic the effect of copperhead venom is on humans. I've worked with venom before. I've seen how various invertebrates affect human blood, but the copperhead's venom is way more potent than that of the wolf spider or the bark centipede. So I expect to see a much more dramatic effect. So right here, this is healthy human blood. You can see everything has a nice red color, uniform arrangement of the, the healthy donut shaped cells. All right, so we got the sample in. I'll take a look and see if we can actually see a reaction. Okay, something's happening there. What's going on here is kind of crazy. See, at first look, at first look, it doesn't look like much, but I can already see this weird patchiness to the sample. What this is actually doing is certain groups of the blood cells are clumping together while others are being more thinned out. And what's actually kind of occurring is the blood sample is being turned into a weird textured jelly. This is not coagulation. Healthy coagulated blood looks like this, where the blood cells stack up and kind of form, you know, almost like chains uh, because that healthy coagulation is designed to close a wound. As the reaction continues, we can actually see something really strange happening. See, healthy blood, when on a microscope slide like this, it'll, it'll, it'll move around. But look at how fluid this sample is. There are parts of it that are really clumped, but there are also parts of it that are extremely runny, extremely fluid. And this change in the consistency of the blood is what causes immense tissue damage in victims of copperhead bites. As I watched my blood cells become a red soup under the microscope, I was in awe at the power of the copperhead. These reptiles have the ability to do serious damage to the human physiology, but as we saw, they're not inclined to use it. Bites from copperheads occur not because these snakes are mean, but because their impeccable camouflage causes them to get stepped on from time to time, and they lash out for a bite only as a last resort defense. Will you die from a bite? Not likely. But as you can see from the effects here, copperhead bites are not something to play around with. These snakes deserve our respect and our distance. You can't be bitten by a snake that you're observing from afar. If you see one of these snakes, just appreciate the fleeting glimpse of a true force of nature and leave it be. Want to see more incredible venomous snakes? Check out this video right here, where I was down in Louisiana learning to handle vipers by practicing with cotton mouths. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.